Good morning. Today I have something cool to show you: an interface for the ESP32 router that is local to the flipper. What does this mean? Well, you don't need silly serial connections no more. The flipper and the dev board alone is a complete package, allowing you to operate free of the need to be plugged in. So there are two ways to incorporate the local interface. The blue pill is to simply install the new Rogue Master firmware and enjoy the feature in less than ten minutes. The red pill is to pull the source code and build it into your own firmware. It is the same process in my last video, also linked in the description. And notice that you don't need any icons for this one. Once you lay down the groundwork, it's time for some fun. Let's hack some shit with this neat little bundle of a slippery mischief. To conduct a Marauder attack, enter the Marauder Companion app, and you will see a list of available commands. There are three steps to perform a Marauder Wi-Fi attack. The ESP device will scan and build a list of Wi-Fi present in your area. You specify the type of the attack and the target, and I mean Wi-Fi attack. There are two types of commands here. Offensive and defensive. Offensive commands include scan AP, list, and attack. These commands will perform a range of actions that detect, identify, and attack your victim network. Defensive commands include other sniffing action. These will allow you to scan for malicious attacks targeting your own network. As you might have already noticed. There are also letter parameters that define the target and types of your commands. All right, let's start from ground zero. You're sitting here with your properly set up flipper device, and want to hack your first Wi-Fi. What do you do? The first step is to scan and build a list of Wi-Fi in your area. Simply use the command scan ap. Press the back button when you find the Wi-Fi you wish to target. In this case, it's my own Wi-Fi. Chance the router. Then use the list command. There are two similar commands with different parameters. Dash A will list the access points, and dash S will list the SSIDs. Now, normally use dash A because it lists the actual name of the Wi-Fi, and it's easier for me to target it. Now, with the list of access points, use the select command to select your victim. This need to match match with the parameters in your previous list command. If you choose list dash a, then you also need to choose select dash a. Then you need to add the final piece of the command. This is simply the number in front of the name of your victim network. Punch it in and go back to the list. You will see a selected text next to the Wi-Fi name. Finally, we can attack and deprive our victim of the fundamental fabric of modern civilization. In this case, myself. There are three types of attacks: beacon attacks, which creates a bunch of copycat networks; the authorization, which kicks all connected devices off of Wi-Fi; and probe attack, which spams the host with a bunch of requests and reduces the performance of the network. The commands are nicely listed out for us here. To help you understand, attack is just a command that won't change. It's like a syntax. Dash T is the type of attack, followed by the attack name. For beacon attack, there is also an additional parameter that follows the command. Dash L, R, or A stands for list random or access points. If you correctly set up the device, the flipper should do the rest of the work for you. Let's run these commands. First, let's try the auth. Using the select A command, I target my own Wi-Fi, which my PC is connected to, and I select the auth. And voila, my PC is disconnected from my Wi-Fi. I will not be able to reconnect until I stop the attack from the flipper. Second, let's try beacon attack. Targeting the same Wi-Fi, I simply select beacon A. And if I look into my network list here, there are suddenly a bunch of random networks popping up. If you see this phenomenon in your home or workplace, now you know that something funny might be going on. 
Might not be the best idea to just blindly connect to any of them so you can go back to watching Pornhub. Now for the probe attack. I will use this internet speedometer to determine if the attack have any effect. And here you can see, without the attack, I have about 100 megabytes per second download speed and 20 megabytes of upload speed. P.S. The actual speed is much slower than that, I don't know why, but if we execute the probe attack and run the speedometer again, you can see that it severely hinders my internet speed by spamming all those probe requests. Ah, uh, that's more or less been retired. I see, I see. Do you still have the thing? <laughs> For the rest of the defense functions, I will not go through them one by one. But to give you a rough idea, Sniff Beacon and DAuth basically scans for these type of attacks performed on your selected network. Sniff PMK ID allows you to obtain the pairwise master key ID. It is an important authenticator when you connect to a Wi-Fi. The Sniff ESP scans for other ESP devices made by expressive systems. The Sniff PWN scans for Panagotchi which is the little Wi-Fi cracker device that some consider to be the predecessor of the Flipper Zero. That leaves us with Clear, Channel, and Help, where Clear deletes any list you previously built and Channel switches between the channels of the Wi-Fi. Help gives you a list of descriptions of the commands. I believe this is everything. As you can see here, any basic ESP32 tools are capable of detecting invasions. So like I always said, use these features responsibly and be aware of the potential consequences. I will end the video with a tip regarding the Wi-Fi dev board. When you plug in the board, the power consumption of the flipper increases. Even if you unplug the board, the flipper still draws more power than it should. I don't know why is this, but just remember to reboot the flipper after you unplug the dev board. And that is all I got for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you later.